To enter subject data, we'll go to the subject matrix and select the subject and event for which we want to enter the data. If we already scheduled the event, we need to click on the event to get more options and then click on View Enter Data. Within this page, we have the list of CRFs that need to be filled in. As you can see here, we have the name of the CRF, the version, the status, the name of the user that entered the data, at the moment empty because we didn't enter any data so far. Nothing in this column because this is just applicable for double data entry. And finally, the available actions. We'll click on the little pencil to enter or edit the data, on the magnifier glass to view the content of the form with no addition access, and finally, on the little printer to print the content of the CRF. It is important to respect the order of the forms when we enter data because the system might be programmed to perform validation checks which could be based on previous information. Having said this, let's enter some data. Click on the pencil button to open the first CRF where we just need to provide the data of the visit. Let's say today. If we consider that the data we entered is correct and final, click on Mark CRF Complete. When we do this, the monitors and the data managers will know that this CRF is considered as completed and will be able to start their work. It also activates important functionalities for the correct validation of the data. We recommend to mark CRF as complete on an ongoing basis and do not wait until the end. An exception to this rule might be for information like adverse events or concomitant medication that may need to be updated during the whole study. OK, let's finish here. Click on the button to save the data and go back to the CRF list. Let's fill some more CRFs to see the different types of data field structures that we can find in Open Clinica. The next CRF is informed consent. This one is very similar to the previous. Provide the date, click on Mark CRF Complete, and save. Next one, demographic and anthropometric data. Also a very easy form, we have a drop-down list to specify the gender of the subject, the date of birth. Another drop-down list for the race, and two numeric fields for weight and height. Notice that we have an automated field which calculates the body mass index. Easy. Let's mark the CRF as complete and save. Next CRF, medical history. This CRF contains a table in which we can add as many rows as required. Let's imagine we have a patient in front of us and we ask them about their previous medical history. The patient has diabetes and does not remember the exact date of the diagnosis. Fortunately, this CRF accepts partial dates, so we just need to provide the available information. For example, April 2013. Note that the first letter of the month must be uppercase. To finish, leave the end date empty and click on Ongoing. The patient also said that they had anemia between 2011 and 2012. Note the presence of the cross button that is used to delete rows. Because of traceability reasons, we won't be able to delete rows once we have saved the data. After saving, if we go back to the Medical History CRF, as you can see, the X button is not available anymore. In case of mistakes, we cannot remove the row, but we can edit or remove the content.